Hey everybody, Mike Toy Bonsai Boise. So I've been taking little clips here and there of my multiple ficus fusion projects that I've got going. I think when I counted, I had something around 20. I didn't set out to do 20 projects, it just sort of happened that way. Um, if you've seen some previous videos that I made on these bush to bonsai uh, projects, I ended up with a lot of cuttings. And I just sort of wrapped a lot of them up and, you know, tried fusing them. So I'm going to pull some out of the greenhouse here and uh, just give you a look at some. I'm going to show some clips of some, you know, um, work that I did on these over the summer and just show you some different um, things that I've learned about trying to fuse them together, both good and bad. But first, I'll start by giving you just a quick look at my main ficus fusion. This is the first one that I ever tried, started it about five years ago. There it is. I learned a lot from this one. Mainly I learned how I could do it better. So this is my original ficus fusion. Please pardon some of the little uh, cards up at the top left there. This is just to keep them straight because there's gonna be a lot of them coming and going out of this video. So this one I started about five years ago. The number one thing that I think I took away from this is not to braid them together. You see it all the time when you go into stores, any big box stores, you see it just all the time everywhere. They braid them together. It's actually not the most efficient way to do it. It will take the longest to fuse together that way. There's a lot of reasons for that, but the main reason is that um, it, I guess to put it plainly, it's just more space to cover. So if you imagine putting two branches side by side, them fusing together side by side will happen quicker than if you wrapped it around. You know, it would look, it's gonna look like this, like a rope, kind of. So it'll still fuse together, just it doesn't look natural the way it will if you just have them side by side. So as you can see, this is after five-ish years of fusing it together. I still like it. It's still cool. But it doesn't at all look natural yet. I didn't start paying attention to any branch structure until just this summer. I, for the most part, I just kind of let it grow and then I would hack it back and let it grow and hack back. Only this summer did I start to actually work on some structure to it. I put a couple of spacers in there because a lot of the branches were just going straight up or growing into each other. That's what you get for not you know, maintaining it for five years. So that was the main one. Here's one over the summer that I did. Um, I pulled a lot of them out because I was really just going to try and consolidate some of them because I just have so many of these things. It gets away from you. So there's where I consolidated two or three of those little fusions together. It doesn't have to be pretty either. It's going to change its shape and character over time. It, it, so yeah, emphasis on it doesn't have to look pretty yet. At the beginning when you're fusing them together, for the most part, the goal is just to get them to fuse together. The fastest way to get them to fuse together is to have as much surface area touching as possible and just letting that foliage grow the more foliage the more growth so here I'm going to show you an example in a second of one where I did it differently so as you can see this is after just six months and you can see that one's fusing together real nice and the reason is that there is less area trying to fuse together. And this is something I just sort of figured out by accident with this tree, in fact. I was surprised when I pulled the tape off to see how well it had fused together. So I made a little animation when I try to illustrate my, my point that I'm making. Let's say you got a couple of trees and you want to do a fusion project. So the first tree, you put some branches in there and you tape it up with your Teflon tape. Looks great. The problem is that that is a lot of surface area now to cover, to try and fuse together. On the flip side, if you put a few trees together and you tape up just a small portion of it, it's less area 
that has to fuse together, so it will happen faster. And it's a bottleneck, so it bulges at that one spot, like this. So that was something I learned. Now, most people don't want just a fusion in one little spot. They want a big trunk, and that's fine too. I'm just showing you the pros and cons. So this way happens the fastest. I still put more cuttings in there and taped it up just because I had cuttings to, I got cuttings coming out of everywhere. And you gotta do something with them, so may as well just fuse them together. My long-term goal with a lot of these is to just keep fusing them more and more and consolidate them. So take some of these successful ones and then fuse those together. So here's an example of where I had a lot of surface area to cover. These were long, straight branches. So if you want to do a longer trunk, this would be the way to do it. It won't happen as fast as that last one, but it will happen faster than the first one because they're not braided together. So I wrapped this one up, I want to say about six months ago. I had a couple of oddball shaped trunks in there with little bumps in it, which you wouldn't think it'd make a big difference. But it does, because that little bump on the trunk, it just pushes it out more, pushes the whole trunk out more. So it will now take longer. So this is kind of a beginning stage of a fusion. You'll see they're, they're starting to mold together, but they're not fused by any means. They're still independent trunks. So this one I didn't really do much with. I just wanted to take, take a look and check it out. So I did. I'm just going to tape it back up in super speed. So that's sort of what they look like in the very beginning stages. They they start off with these wild trunks going in their own directions and then after six months or a year they're sort of molded together like they've been smushed together but they're not fused. And then you'll start to see little spots here and there that are fused which is encouraging. So here it is after I trimmed it. Here's another one. This one, unfortunately, I lost the footage where I took the tape off, but I also wrapped wire around the tape. Pros and cons to the wire. It definitely speeds up the fusing process, and it definitely bites into the bark if you just let your guard down for even a minute. This is the same amount of time as the last one, about six months. I had thought that by taping it up first and then putting wire around it, it might sort of prevents some of that biting into the trunk, but it really didn't. So there it is again. I taped it back up, put the wire back on because I didn't learn my lesson the first time. This time I'm definitely gonna pay more attention. Definitely, definitely, hopefully. Throw some fertilizer in there while I'm at it. It's hard to reach some of these ones in the back of the grow tent. So when I have it out, I try to maintenance it a little bit. But also I noticed trees in general tend to grow really well when you just leave them alone. The ones in the back of the greenhouse that you can't really reach, as long as you can still get water to it, they seem to grow the most because you're not messing with it all the time. Here's one that I thought, you know, I'm just going to stick one in an actual bonsai pot just because, yeah, I know it'll slow it down, but I got enough of them and I'm experimenting, so let's see how it does. It's doing okay. The one upside to it, while it may not be fusing the fastest, it does have a lot of root flare. Because it can't grow down and deep into those deep pots. So it grows down and then out, which flares out the trunk, the base of the trunk. So that's the upside to growing it in a shallow pot this early. This one's really been kind of neglected. It's got weeds growing in there. So clean it up and put it back. Here's one that I really like, and it just has some cool potential structure and movement to it. I end up trimming it up, but otherwise it was doing so well, I didn't really mess with it. I didn't want to take the tape off of this one. But as you can see, I, um, I'm putting more effort into trying to work on the structure earlier on, so I don't run into the problem that I ran into on the first one where it's just a nightmare five years later. 
Here's another one. So you can see again, this is that very beginning stage where they're sort of molded together and they're all kind of growing in the right direction. Clumped up, but they're not quite fused. I think this one has a little fusion going in like one or two spots, uh, like right there, for example. You see it's starting to fuse just a little bit. But it's got a ways to go. So having the wire on definitely speeds it up because that wire is just unforgiving. It just does not give at all. So as it, these trunks grow, they got nowhere to grow but in. And so they fuse together. But then they run out of room that way too and they start to grow out and that's when the wire bites into it. So you really have to be mindful and stay on top of, of that. So again, I didn't learn my lesson. I don't know. I don't know if I did or not. I, I like how the wire does help with the fusion. I just have to be better about staying on top of it. And if it does bite into the trunk a little bit, I can live with it. A little bit. Here's another one. It's like unwrapping a mummy. The Teflon tape so far has worked the best. It does get stringy, kind of like you're seeing here, but it's manageable. If you've seen some of my previous videos on updates with that original Ficus Fusion, I've tried all kinds of methods, rubber bands, electrical tape, and everything else. So this one too had the wires on it. I don't think I got on camera taking the wires off. One good thing about this time of year is you get to work inside and watch cool shows like the Vikings. This has nothing at all to do with bonsai. It was just on and I'm a big fan. So I sort of turned the camera for 10 seconds just to catch a little clip of it. Ragnar. Okay, back to fusion. Here's another one. So you can see I've, I've got them in all shapes and sizes. Some are big, some are little. And a lot of these I haven't even looked at since I started them. I just sort of wrapped a lot of them up and let them grow over the summer and now into the fall. And This is the first time I'm seeing a lot of them. So here's another one where the wire's bit into it, but hopefully you're seeing a trend by now. You can see how well this one is fused together. It's it's real close to being one solid trunk at this point, and it's same timeline as the others, going on about six months now. So the wire definitely helps, and it speeds up the process of fusing, but you really got to be careful if you don't want it biting into the trunk. And that bothers some people more than others. Here's another one that I put in a bonsai pot. I sort of forgot about for a minute. So you can see little aerial roots popping out. I don't know how it does it, but those aerial roots find their way out of that Teflon tape. Kind of cool. Anyway, same thing as that last one that was in the bonsai pot. The fusing doesn't happen quite as fast but the root base just flares out. So kind of a cool effect. I might uh, I'll have to do some further experiments later and see whether it's best to work on the root base first and then the trunk or vice versa. Here's one that I kind of expected big things out of. Just because there was I think I put some of the larger cuttings together in this one. Taped it up real good. I 
was a bit disappointed to see that they had not fused at all. And again, same thing because there's so much surface area. I mean, that's maybe six inches or so that I'm trying to fuse together. So they just don't fuse as fast when you try to wrap that much together. So disappointingly, I just taped it back up, put it back in. When it does finally fuse together, it will look cool, I think. That's the upside to those. Though they take longer, they will look cooler in the end. Or they have more potential to be taller. So there it is, after I wrapped it back up. You have to be a little mindful when you trim up a, a fusion project too. They react and behave a little differently than others. Others, you can look at it holistically as one tree when you're making cutting decisions. Here you can't if they're not fused yet. So you cut all the foliage off of one quote unquote branch, you might be taking off all the foliage of that particular tree. Now this one's a little messy. I must have been lazy one summer night when I did this one because <laughs> look at that, that's messy. I had wires going everywhere, not even around tape, just around the bark, and I pay the price for it. So you'll see, look at that, that that's pretty ugly. So you can see it fused together, same thing. So if, if you're catching any trends here, the main thing is wiring them together fuses them the fastest. But it's also the riskiest because it's going to eat into the bark if you take your eyes off it, like I did. Also, doing like I did and fusing the top part and then the bottom part, you end up with holes in the middle. It sounds kind of common sense now that I see it and know it. But at the time, I didn't really think much about it. I just sort of thought it would help hold it together and it would all fuse together. Didn't really think about that little intermittent period in the in the middle where it's not. So it, it is fusing together up there pretty well. And it will outgrow those marks. But you can see there's little gaps now in the middle. See that? It's kind of cool in a weird way. It's the kind of thing only a mother would love. It's, uh, it'd be ugly to everybody but me. I guess that makes me its mother or father or whatever. See that? Yeah. A lot of people would say, oh, that's ugly. Oh, you don't want that. And you probably don't. I'm not even saying they're wrong. I'm just saying it's kind of cool. It's unique. Here's one where I, I did less surface area, just focused on the bottom, and you can see that it fused to, it's a little bit past that initial stage, and it is starting to fuse, though it is not completely fused yet. And it definitely has those wire marks. Also, you can use thicker wire too. I was using, I think, just one millimeter wire, either one or maybe one and a half, I'm not sure. But if you use like a three or four or five, that would help because the wire is thicker. It's not going to bite in as easily. So that's another thing. Somebody told me once you can take that one millimeter wire and just double it up. I'm not so sure that would work, though. I still think that it would cut in. But maybe not. I haven't tried it. There it is. Wrapped it back up. Wrapped the wire. I wrapped the wire around in a kind of a tighter coil this time too thinking that might help probably wishful thinking but we'll find out here in six months or a year when we check it out again give it a little maintenance some fertilizer some water give it a little drink of water here ready to go back into the greenhouse now 
I think I skipped the, a number there. I went from Fusion 13 to 15. Sorry about that. Here's kind of a goofy one. Sort of like broad-sided. I don't know how it ended up this way. So it's really skinny from one angle and it's really broad on another. And it's got a lot of small trunks in there too, which is kind of lame, but I got some cuttings. So to wrap this video up, I'm going to take some cuttings, put it in here with those other weird broad-sided skinny cuttings, and try using some extra cuttings in there with it and doing it on a small scale. You can see it's only about an inch or two tall there where I taped it up. So that's what I've got on Fusion Updates. Thank you for watching today. Please like and subscribe. Leave any comments with experience you have, good, bad, or otherwise. I appreciate everybody who does. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your night.